بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله حمدا كثيرا طيبا مباركا فيه كما يحب ربنا ويرضى ما زلنا بإذن الله في مراجعة هذه الأبيات من اللامية التي نصب إلى الشيخ الإسلام رحمه الله تعالى We are still reviewing the lines of authority that we took so far from al this poem that has been attributed to Shaykh al-Islam, rahimahullahu ta'ala. We, saw, we reached his statement, Qubhan liman nabadha al-Qur'an wa ra'ahu, wa sahih wa Qubhan liman nabadha al-Qur'an wa ra'ahu, this is Qur'an, al-Qur'an, out of riwaya. Qubhan liman nabadha al-Qur'an wa ra'ahu, wa idha stadalla yaqulu qala al-akhu. الأخطل هذه الأبيات بارك الله فيكم الشيخ in this line of poetry is making إنكار إنكارا ظاهرا على من يستعمل ويستدل لغير كتاب يعني القرآن وسنة نبينا محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم على إثبات صفات الله سبحانه وتعالى in this line of poetry, the Sheikh is making a clear opposition and blame on those who use other than the Quran and the Sunnah to affirm the descriptions of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. May he be any attribute repulsiveness and ugliness to him. Right? This action is ugly, it's qubhan, it's repulsive. To attribute to descriptions to Allah or to take from him descriptions based on intellect, not based on the Quran or Sunnah. Qubhan liman nabadha al-Quran wa ra'ahu. Qubhan, repulsiveness, let that be for the one who those the Quran behind their backs. Wa hadha sifa dhameema nusibat wa wusifat bihi ahlul kitab. The people of the book, the Christians and the Jews have been described with the likes of this. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he says, وَإِذْ أَخَذَ وَإِذْ أَخَذَ اللَّهُ مِثَاقَ الَّذِينَ أُوتُوا الْكِتَابِ لَتُبَيِّنُونَهُ لِلنَّاسِ وَلَا تَكْتُمُونَ فَنَبَذُوهُ وَرَاءَ ظُهُورِهِمْ وَاشْتَرَوْ بِهِ ثَمَنًا قَلِيلًا فَبِئْسَ مَا يَشْتَرُونَ And when Allah, he took a covenant, a promise, an agreement with the people who were given the book, meaning the Jews and the Christians, that they're going to explain this book, meaning the book of Allah. And they're not going to hide anything from it. They threw it behind their backs. Meaning they, they left, they, they left, Taraku al Amal B. They left off acting according to it and using it as proof to affirm the descriptions of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Specifically, qala wa idha stadalla yaqulu qala al akhtalu. Al akhtal huwa sha'ir. اسمه غياث ابن غوث اسمه غياث ابن غوث التغلبي وهو نصراني This is a Christian poet نعم Some of the people of Ahl al-Bid'ah the people of innovations they use other than the Quran and the Sunnah they use this sha'ir and the things that he used in his poetry to affirm some of the meanings of the descriptions of Allah Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says الرحمن على العرش استوى الرحمن he rose upon his throne upon his arch استوى بمعنى صعيدا وارتفع استوى it means to rise above many ayat Allah says خلق السماوات والأرض وما بينهما ثم استوى على العرش numerous ayat about seven ayat of the Quran Allah سبحانه وتعالى says that Allah created the heavens and the earth then he rose above his throne. Amma hadha sha'ir, he used this word in another meaning. Wa huwa qal, wa listawa bishran ala al-Iraq min ghayri sayfin wa la damin mihraq. He used istawa bima'na istawla. Naam. That bishr conquered Iraq. Naam. So the people of innovation they say that Allah mustawa, Allah didn't rise above his throne. Istawa, 
It means what it means in this poet by this Christian, meaning it's stolen. I mean, Allah overtook the throne. Subhanahu wa ta'ala amma yaqulun wa amma yasifun. Allah is free from what they attribute to him. That Allah overtook the throne. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the creator of the heavens and the earth. Naam. Doesn't have to overtake everything. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala who led you dabbirul amr. He's the ones that manages the affairs. Lahu muqa samawati wal ard. Everything in the heavens and the earth belong to him. But just to affirm that Allah is not above his throne, and they want to say that Allah is everywhere and he's not above, they change the meaning from istawa for meaning sa'ida, wartafa'a, that istawa means to go up. They want to change the meaning of istawa to what istawla, meaning Allah conquered. This sha'ir al akhtal he has sha'ir fi. Uh, and he has lines of poetry and something else. They don't want to affirm that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala yatakallam. Wal kalam sifa thabita lillah. Speaking is a description for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Al Quran kalamuhu bi ma'na annahu takallam bihi bi sawt wal harf. Speaking is a, in a, as a description for Allah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He speaks. Naam. And his Quran is the speech of Allah. Allah spoke with it, with his salt, with his voice, with the actual letters of it. Asami'ahu Jibreel. And Jibreel heard it from Allah and he conveyed it. But this Christian, he has in some lines of poetry that the Muslims take it to affirm, no, Allah doesn't speak. All the descriptions of Allah, we affirm it without changing the meaning. But this Christian, he has a line of poetry where he says, Inna al kalama la fil fu'adi, wa inna ma ju'ila lisanu ala al fu'adi la lilan, dalilan. Inna al kalam, verily speech is just in the heart. Naam. They're saying the speech of Allah is just something intended, it's not something that, that Allah actually speaks. But this Christian here says that Inna al kalam la fil fu'adi, verily speech is just something that's in the heart. The tongue is just an indicator of what's in the heart, meaning that kalam is nafsani, that speech is just something that's internal with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and that is not the case for Shaykh al Islam. And his disapproval of this says, Qubhan, liman Quran May he be ugly and repulsive. The one that takes the proof from the Quran and Sunnah and he puts it behind his back. And if he wants to prove something about Allah, he says that this Christian poet said this and this Christian poet said that. That is ridiculous. Nasr Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as-salamu wa al-afiyah. Nattafi bihad al-qadr. Subhanakallahumma wa bihamdik. Ashadu an la ilaha illa ant. Astaghfiruk wa atubu ilayk.